Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. I meant for my first video to debunk the claim made by Nephilim Free that his cat is proof of intelligent design. Well, to be strictly accurate, the first thing I wanted to do was to debunk his views on geology. Fortunately, Rhyme Maiden 1 has already done a series of videos on the subject, and she's done a better job of it than I would. Wow, you really don't know the first thing about any of this, do you? But then I discovered his views regarding this stuff. This, let's say this represents the base pairs, the, uh, I mean, the nucleotides, A, C, G, and T in okay. DNA, okay? But I have, just for uh, illustration's sake, A, C, G, T, A, C, G, T, I like that, yep, okay? Yep, still or with you. One. This represents strand one and strand two of the DNA double helix molecule. Hang on, what? I had to re-watch this part of the video to make sure I hadn't misunderstood anything, but no. Nephilim Free really does believe that in DNA, A pairs with A, C pairs with C, and so on. This is something that any high school student could tell you is wrong. In fact, it's something that anybody who has been to Wikipedia can tell you is wrong. One viewer pointed this out in the comments, and indeed made other points that I'm going to come onto in this video, but Nephilim Free just seems to have ignored them. I'd like to see how he defends this mistake, because in the Computing with DNA manuscript that he cites, there is a section devoted to the chemistry of DNA with a very simple explanation which clearly states that A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G, with the exception of a very special situation which I'll look at in another video and isn't relevant here. There was even a diagram to make it absolutely clear. Oh well, at least he didn't eat the paper this time. Let's see what else he's got. Say that there is a sequence in DNA that says, that is coded A, C, G, T. It's a rather short sequence, but we'll roll with it for now. There may be another one. On the same nucleotides, that's, that's coded C, T, A, T. Do you see what I mean? Overlapping sequences to share nucleotides. Oh god, it just got a whole lot worse. It's true that you can get different products from the same stretch of DNA by processes such as differential splicing. It's also true that certain viral genomes have overlapping genes. This is because viral genomes need to be very small. But I don't know of any evidence whereby you can produce new sequences simply by skipping out individual nucleotides. If you can find some evidence for it in the scientific literature, then I'd be very interested to read it. And if it's something that you've just discovered, then I should drop your YouTube channel immediately and get publishing, because it's almost certainly worthy of a Nobel Prize. But not only that, they might share base pairs both, or just one nucleotide in a base pair. I don't like where this now, is going. Guess more fun. There may be a sequence in DNA that says A, C, G, T, A, C, A, C, G, T. Strand hopping. Do you see that? I don't think I can stand much more of this. If it's possible just to jump around like this, then why not simply have these four bases as the entire human genome and then pick them out according to whichever combination you want at the time? Both strands can come into play for things like transcription factor binding sites, but that's about it. Certainly in coding sequences, only one strand is ever used. Why can't both strands be used for coding sequences? Because the two strands run in opposite directions to each other, and enzymes that read DNA can only read in one direction or the other. And finally, let's see what you've got to say about that manuscript by James Foster. The algorithms of DNA are so sophisticated and so, such, so excellent that we are just now beginning to be able to decipher some of these. And guess what they're doing with them? They're applying them to computer technology because apparently God's algorithms are better than man's. Okay, I want to show you a few samples of some of the more simple algorithms that we have deciphered for DNA. This is written by Applied Logic Department of Computer Science at the University of Ohio, I mean Idaho, in 1997. So when you say we're only just starting to unravel these algorithms, you seem to be using the phrase only just to mean 13 years ago. This was printed in 1997, and bearing in mind that the structure of DNA wasn't known until 1953, I'd say that amounts to pretty good progress. But all this is irrelevant, because as we'll see, this manuscript has absolutely nothing to do with DNA information storage. Here's one. Input for each node V and edge U V. T V contains S V and S over, over S V. I don't know this math. I'm not real good at math. But look at this. 
Indeed, it becomes painfully clear over the next couple of seconds that you don't understand this math. Did it ever occur to you that maybe if you don't understand it, you shouldn't be citing it as evidence? Contains, and then mix, blah, blah, blah. Look at this mathematics. Remove, remove. Move length plus 10 strings from T to T. If detect T, then return yes, else return no. This looks like computer programming magnificent. Why? Because that's what it is. Well done. This is DNA, digital information storage. Not so well and done. Listen to this. This is a decision-making process. If detect, then return yes, else return no. In other words, if this is not detected, if it is detected, return yes. If it's not, return no, and then go to another opera uh, operation. This is what is in your DNA. This is not happening in your DNA. DNA does not make decisions. DNA does not run simulations. It's inanimate. If Neff had read this paper properly, he'd have discovered that it is an attempt at a mathematical model for something called the polymerase chain reaction, which is a man-made process and is used in genetics, but has nothing to do with information storage in DNA. They also come to the conclusion that their model is far from perfect. Look at this. Input T with all valid strings for J equals 1 to, T, to, to N. Copy. And then look at this mathematics here. Remove. Is any string other than I mixed? First, J is the distinctive string. Blah, blah, blah. Look at this. This is the mathematics of, D of DNA. Look at this mathematics. Look at it. This look is going it. on in every cell in your body right now. You see mathematics alone. Well, that's all the nonsense I can stomach for now. In the next video, we'll look at his views on what counts as information in the genome, including junk DNA and something called linguistics law, whatever that is.